It's been two years since Robert Ford was a state senator for South Carolina. And two years later, he wants to return to finish his public service. In this special edition of Quintess Post Ups, I speak exclusively with him one on one. Senator Ford, okay. it's so good to see you again. Nice to see you, man. It's a long time. Yes, sir. Tell me, how are you? Well, I'm great. Yeah. Just trying to serve the citizen of South Carolina. In fact, you uh, are actually running for your old seat in District you No, know, oh, correction, it's not my seat. Okay. It's a people's seat. I'm running for real election. I'm running to go back because there's about five or six things I want to address that nobody, everybody has refused to address. Which is? Okay, the first one is that I want a $75 million bond for South Carolina State to build a satellite office in Charleston and to renovate the campus in Orangeburg. I also want, I got, I was able to get five acres of land for South Carolina State in downtown Charleston on the east side when we built the Ravenel Bridge. But that land is five acres worth $10 million. I want to put a satellite campus there. I also want to make at least every county, at least one or two one no type super high schools. What I mean by that is this. At one no high school in Mount Pleasant, when a student leaves there, they, they can leave there being a plumber, a barber, a beautician, an engineer, computer, or a graphic computer operator, anything that they dream of they can do at one no high school. I think every county in the state should have at least one of those and in the larger counties too. I could find ways to pay for those schools because I'm good at organizing. And you remember, I supported the lottery and then I was able to go statewide and got it passed. And from that lottery, I was able to get almost an impossible, something, something happened that almost was impossible. I was able to get public funds, public funds in private religious institutions. Benedict Morris, Clavin Boys, and, uh, and Allen, each of those schools get $635,000 a year. That's the only, we the only state in the country that put public money in private religious institution. At this point, we're talking about 16 years later, yeah. that's $10 million each of those schools have received. I want to raise that 635000 to $1 million per school every year. I have vision to make things better for citizens of this state, citizens of District 42, and those citizens who are considered Latinos and African Americans who've been left off the mainstream. I want to continue to be their champion. I'm not a traditional elected official. To a lot of people, it's all about them building themselves up for something else or, be, or to become rich. To me, it's strictly public service. And I take it serious. I was in the civil rights movement with Dr. King. Right. They taught me all of this stuff, and that just got to carry on until Robert Ford is no longer. In fact, when we and when I interviewed you for Quintus Post House back in 2014, you told me, quote, I have accomplished probably more in the state senate than any other person, maybe in the state history. So I'm wondering, what is it like to be Robert Ford? Now everybody should have an interest in serving the need of folks until everything is better. If you if you say you want to be a public servant and not a politician, you got an awesome responsibility. Your job as a public service, whether you're on city council, county council, school board, et cetera, if you're president or if you're in Congress, your job is to improve the condition of the people you serve. A president is to improve the lives of Americans. A United States senator and those kind of people pose to improve the lives of their state along with city council. If you combine all the elected officials that make up a city, a small town, a state, and a country, every American is supposed to be living, supposed to be living a decent life. Minimum wages should not be six, seven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour. It should be whatever it takes for a family or for an individual to live a decent life in America. And that's my goal, is to fight for those kind of things. And I did a great job in this state. I'm responsible for two hot two legal holidays. Usually in a lifetime of, of a president is able to get one holiday, that's America. I got two legal state holidays. I brought down the four Confederate flags that was put up in 1962. Every Southern state put up Confederate flags in 1961, 62 to the North Civil Rights Movement. The four that was put up in South Carolina, I took those flags down with S60. That's the bill number 
It was signed into law, and those four flags came down. And I couldn't get nobody to sponsor or co-sponsor that legislation. I had to do it by myself. We got an African-American monument on the grounds of the South Carolina Capitol. I'm basically responsible for that, along with Senator McConnell and Senator Darry Jackson. Right. Uh, okay, I was able to get the Medicaid, I mean, uh, the Department of Transportation, when we built the Ravenel Bridge, I was able to get 22% minority participation. That added up to about $115 million. I did the same thing when Boeing came to Charleston, right, right after the, uh, the flags came down, I got 27%, plus we trained 37 black contractors on the ton of construction uh, license. They was able to operate and build Boeing as a subcontractor with Turner, who was the main contractor. So my job is to just to improve the condition of people. And to do that, Quinn, the first thing you gotta do, you gotta love people. Okay. You can't be about yourself. You gotta be about people. And so nothing to joke. To me, this stuff is life and death. I don't joke about serving. Right. And when people say he's running, yeah, but he's running because I got something to run for. And that's to improve the lives of people. And matter of fact, when you when we talked back in 2014, you said this quote, people in my district in the state know who I am. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because I said it. I'm a public servant. And you also said this too, you know, when you, you, you mentioned this just a second ago, but you brought down the Confederate flag, and I know you had some issues with the ILA and the labor unions as well. Well, I championed that cause for 21 years. I don't have issue with them. My job is to make sure that we have, that we maintain unions in this country. The ILA represent the backbone of South Carolina. Uh, the president is Kenny Riley. Right. For 21 years, I supported everything that the union wanted. And the men, the ILA members, 90% of them probably, or 95%, or those who know me, they're gonna support me because they know I saved their union. But sometimes politics get involved with life, and so I don't deal with trivia stuff. If the, if, if the top guys in the ILA got to support somebody else, I guess they can do so. But they ought to know, and they do know, I saved the union. I got on the floor of the, floor of the Senate right. and debated and debated and debated until they realized that I was going to sit down and we got to have that union in the state. And I also stopped the confirmation of Charlie Condon at the request of Kenny Rowley because he would have destroyed the union. And I stopped it by using Senate procedures. So I did my job for the union. I did my job for the lawyers. I did my job for the religious community by helping those schools. Now, if they don't support Robert Ford, that's between them and their God. I did what I had to do as an as elected official to make sure that those people that they represent live a good life. And I'm gonna continue to do that until I pass away. Um, you were sitting here, really in your district, which is District 42. Well, this is the people district. Okay, I represent it. I understand. And the reason I talk like that because I, I like civics. And nobody have a right to claim the district. The district is for the people, and every two years or four years or six years, they can replace you if you're not doing that job. And I like to encourage that too in America, and in, in any jobs in any state. 90% of elected officials to me are useless. They shouldn't be there. And the people should not have them there. And if they know how sorry these folks are, not representing them, they would get rid of them. And so the next few years of my life, I'm gonna spend, if I get a reelected to the Senate, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be serving as a senator, but I'm also gonna be serving as a civil rights advocate to make dreams of those men and women who die in the movement become a reality. And every, that's what I'm saying. This stuff is serious. This not this stuff is not a joke. And everybody want like the news media when they be covering these presidential uh, contests, they make it out a joke and all of that. And I resent that. That's why I'm watching. And so you talk about the presidential election. I'm wondering who are you supporting? It, it, it don't matter. Oh, really? No, it don't matter. All of them, you know, I'm just trying to be a good servant to the people in this district and this state. I don't care who be president. Okay. Yeah. And let me go back to uh, what's going on right now in this district. As you know, a year ago, Walter Scott was uh, killed by a former North Charleston police officer, Michael Slaker. As you know, on Wednesday, uh, Michael Slaker got some federal charges you know, brought against him. And I'm wondering, a year later, where are you emotionally with that? Uh, the, the, the system working. The system working. It was an unfortunate situation, but the system is working and justice will prevail. And, and because the people are gonna demand that justice prevail. But that's not an issue 
you know, a lot of people like to concentrate on those types of uh, issues, like guns and violence and all of that. You got, you got ways to address that. You, you address that by having a better standard of living for people. If people got a good job, living in a good neighborhood, kids attending good schools, they don't, they don't have time, they wouldn't have time to commit crime. This is why we got to make sure every American live a halfway decent life. Because otherwise we're going to always have incident of police, community relations on a negative basis. But for this happening in your district now, you still miss my point. I ain't got no, it don't make no different way to happen. It could have happened here, uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, the same situation. You got to provide people with a better standard of living. That would solve the problem. By you and I discussing the pros and cons of that, that ain't gonna put bread on nobody's table. Let the system take place, let the system work. The system is working. Tell, and, and what I mean, here's what I'm talking about. Okay. You got demonstration on, after demonstration after demonstration once a police situation happened. All of that's good, but don't make that your life. Your life should be, your life should be about making conditions better for people who live in. Better schools, better education, a better standard of living, and then you wouldn't have to worry about all that crime and all these type of incidents. But you have civil rights activists too now. You're missing my point. I'm not going well, to argue with you on that. You're making a point you want to be confrontational. I'm not going to participate in that no more. What I'm telling you is that I don't care what I was. If I was a civil rights advocate, I'm always be a civil rights advocate. And what that means, Quentin, is this. You've got to fight to make things better for people. That's the purpose of everything. And what I'm saying to you is that by you and I discussing past situation about this and about that and about that, those things are over. What's in the future is this. I want to run for re-election to make things better for people in this district and this state. Okay. And that's that's my focus. Let me talk. And you do that through education, better job, higher pay, better housing. That's how you do that. And as you know, you have you resigned over you know ethics charges two years ago. You told me this quote, I'm gonna fight them every step of the way. As we sit here right now, what's that all about? But what what it's about is this. Like I told you earlier, my focus now is to go back to the Senate to do things that make life better for people. All that stuff in the past is gonna stay in the past. I'm not interested in that no more. What I'm interested in now is to make things better for people. I can't change what happened, but you can't change what happened. By you and I discussing it, it ain't gonna change what happened. But we can do something, you and I, if we're going to have people watching us, I think they should know that things could be better in America for everybody. Because God made this planet for everybody, just not a small segment of people. So I'm not going to concentrate on things that I can't deal with. There's nothing I can do about that now. I want to go forward, get reelected, to go to Columbia, and be able to do some things like I talked about earlier. Better education, better schools, better wages, more jobs, a, a opportunity for every South Carolinian to live a good life. And right now, that's not the case. Well, State Senator Robert Ford, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay.